immediately. Which brings me to Patrick, who faces a similar problem, I think, with what makes sense on the one hand, uh, opposed as opposed to what is politically possible. Patrick, uh, you are at Airbus in the center of the storm that is building and has been building since the referendum uh, over what Brexit implies for both the European, and I use Europe in the geographical sense to include the United Kingdom, both the European economy and the European business community. Uh, Arab, uh, Airbus, as we all know, is a tightly integrated organization what are you going to do when whatever happens, happens? Well, I think first what, is, uh, what we wanted to, dis when I discussed with Thierry and, and Nicolas, we, we said we want to give a kind of the, an industrial view, an European industrial company view on what's going on. Because Airbus is, has the, the privilege of being the Europe that works. And, uh, and our success has been based over, the, based over the last 40 years of the free flow of people, goods, services, uh, assets throughout, throughout, throughout Europe. We've got 14,000 employees uh, in the UK. Uh, to give you an idea, that means 80,000 trip of Airbus employee over the channel every year. We've got over uh, 2,300 suppliers. So it is an absolutely integrated component of what we do. There's 15 billion of trade going across the channel on a, on a yearly basis. The issue today is a simple one. Well, it's not a simple one. But it's, uh, when we build an aircraft, we have between one and two million parts for every aircraft. So every part has to be just on time. You need, imagine the logistics to get these two million parts all across the world and across Europe coming at one point in time uh, on quality uh, at, uh, at, uh, at a given place. So obviously, if you want to start to build buffer stocks everywhere uh, in terms of uh, uh, work, of working capital is just simply a killer. You, can, you cannot have two million parts stock all over Europe because you have risk of disruption in the UK. So frictionless trade is absolutely key because uh, we live in a very competitive world. We are a business we, which is, sorry to say, not efficiently supported by our political uh, states, contrary to our competitors. And so we absolutely need to deliver and we need, and we need to deliver uh, according to a very high standards of, of performance. So we're very, we're very worried today because if you look at the, the traffic and logistics, it's mostly trucks today. And there are 6,000 trucks going over the border every, every day. So if you take, even if you say, okay, the goods can go in, but will the truck will be controlled? Will the driver of the truck, if it's French or Moroccan or Spanish, will they be controlled? And if they control, you say if they're very efficient, they need maybe two minutes per, per truck. And two minutes per truck means 30 miles queue before Dover, 50 kilometers of queue every day. Will that disrupt every business? Well, probably so. Um, the other thing which concerns us a little bit is, again, I'm not talking tariff here. I'm talking administration papers. We are going to have to build roughly a quarter of a million administrative documents per year now. Um, we were in a place where when we were exporting across the channel, we have a, a form filled once a month with a dozen of information. Now, such form will have to go across the border with every part with 54 data points. So the level of complexity, the level of uh, inefficiency and administrative load is huge. And that is not Airbus, that is for uh, any company doing business uh, with the UK. So. The challenge for us, and we, we raised our, our hand a while ago because we are very concerned about the level of impreparedness. We are working at full capacity on Airbus. We are, this year, we're targeting, selling, and delivering 800 aircraft. That means more than three aircraft per working day. So if we have one week of delay, we cannot recover that week because we are running at full capacity. So one week of delay means we're gonna, we're gonna lose one billion. And we're very, very lucky if with the Brexit, as we're going into today, will be only one week of delay. So it will massively harm not only UK and companies, but also, I think, uh, European competition. And another point, which is aside from the industrial, which I think uh, uh, relates to every industry which is heavily regulated, like the pharmaceutical, chemicals, defense, and so on. To give you an idea, when every part on the aircraft has to be certified, certified by the European uh, Aerospace Safety Agency. 
The day a part is not certified, the aircraft cannot fly, world over, not only in Europe. Until very recently, the point was the British uh, expressed their willingness to go out of EASA because with this authority goes the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. And if you deny the jurisdiction, you cannot be part of it. But that would have meant that, again, anywhere in the world, once you have to change to put a British part in the aircraft, the aircraft is not certified. If it's not certified, it cannot fly. So we've been working with months now with EASA and, and the British and, and many of our suppliers. So now, a couple of weeks ago, there is an agreement on, in principle on how it should work. And, and the EASA very constructively accept to give a, a third country approval to the, US, the UK suppliers. But there's, again, 100, I mean, more than 2,000 suppliers. There are more than 10,000 parts. And we've got leg out less than six months now to implement this if we don't uh, want the aircraft to be, to, to be grounded. And if you take, if you go into the UK today, the head of custom recently said that it will take four to five years to set up a custom system that would work. And imagine for the SME in the UK. The SME in the UK grew in a, in a world when they don't have to bother about customs. I don't even mean tariff, I mean customs. Because they do business with the neighboring countries in EU and it's free trade and it's easy. But the, none of them know today what will happen after the 29th of March. None of them know today if they have to invest in certain system and which system to do what, what will be the delay, how do you manage your production, how do you manage your sale, your after sale, your support. Nobody knows. Same thing for the airport. There was a, actually the day before yesterday, the National UK Audit uh, Agency that said the airport will need a minimum of three years to get the appropriate uh, border system. IATA, which is the UN for Aviation, uh, said that they were concerned at what will happen after the 29th of March. Today, no one knows what will happen. And the UK uh, Transport Department, again this week, said that they had great concern about what will happen to aviation, but also to train on you know, no norms, no security, what happened with the insurance and so on. So, I think the level of uncertainty for a no deal Brexit is, is extremely significant and, and we feel as an industrial company in the UK that maybe today it's not exactly fully apprehended by all stakeholders and we feel today that even no deal, actually even a bad deal could be better than no deal. Again, it's easy for me, I'm not a politician, but it's certainly <laughs> something we, we do. So very quickly, what. Any, what we're all doing now, same in the automotive, same of what we do, we are building buffers. So we're spending a billion euro in buffers now, both sides of the border. And that impacts our ability to invest. We are in a very competitive industry, rather invest one billion in R&D, one billion to be more competitive, rather than one billion to build stocks. And but we have to do it. Uh, we have, we're investing also a very significant amount to try to anticipate of what could be custom systems and can, how can we digitalize it and having something flexible so whatever the, the countries will come, will come up with we can adjust and react fast. We are trying to help our suppliers also to get ready but m most of them are not today. And so and to, to, conclude, to conclude very quickly I am extremely extremely worried by, by the level of, of readiness uh, of our governments on the issue, and some also of the, uh, uh, of the industrial and the businesses, which I think uh, listen a little bit too much to the flow of information saying, you know, it'll be okay. Well, actually, hopefully it will be okay, but nobody can know today how it will be okay. And of course, I'm conscious that Airbus uh, is an extreme example because we're very integrated, very European, but we're not the only one. I think in automotive, in pharmaceutical, in space, in defense, in many other industries, we find uh, the same, the same concern, and the same, um, and, and 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 the same worries, and I think for all of us, for all the large companies today, these uncertainties and the possible consequences force us to revise our view on on what we will do in the in the UK tomorrow. Uh, clearly, we are today we have fantastic people there. I think it's the most competitive place for all Airbus uh, in 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 Europe by a significant margin, but if the hard Brexit happens we'll have to revise everything, right. our, our investment, our footprint. And I think, again, having talked with people in particular in automotive, 
and BMW, if, amongst others, uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be very very worrying. Well, I, I think the the broader implications are significant. Uh, Airbus is a special case, but Airbus is simply an extreme example of a global value chain. And global value chains are central to the functioning of the international trading system and the, the international economy more generally. And the disruption that Brexit has, or Brexit will, imply for that global value chain is analogous to the disruption that could pertain if there were disruption to the dispute settlement system or to world trade more generally. So I think that, that Airbus gives us a sense of the kinds of problems that are likely to arise more and more in the future as this moves forward. I think Patrick's given us a very good sense of some of the administrative and legal problems that Brexit raises.